Welcome to another episode of Whitetail Rendezvous, coming to you six days a week as we interview whitetail experts and hear their traditions and personal stories of the hunt. Learn more about the latest gear, discover proven tips, and the latest strategies so you can make your next hunt a success. Now, here's your host, Bruce Hutchin. Whitetail Rendezvous Podcast, episode number 232. On today's show, you're going to hear from Amy Burnett Hartwig, who is the media coordinator at Bowtech. What's a media coordinator? Well, Amy's going to tell you all about how she leverages social media for Bowtech. And Bowtech is one of the leading archery manufacturers in the country. And oh yeah, they just picked up and bought Excalibur crossbows out of Canada. Amy takes her time and shares with us the importance of communicating, building relationships, and knowing your gear. Yes, the better you know your gear, the more successful you're going to be in the field. Listen up. It's a pretty good show. Hey, listeners, don't forget to text 33444 food plot for your free food plot ebook. Welcome to another episode of Whitetail Rendezvous. Hey, folks, we're switching it out, and we're going to head way west of the Mississippi to Oregon and, and connect with Amy Burnett Hartwig, who is the media coordinator at Bowtech. Amy, welcome to the show. Thanks a lot. I'm excited to be here. Yeah, it's, it's great to have an alumni guest, and you've had a lot of changes, new house, new job, um, and, you know, you, you love hunting more now than you know you did the last time we talked eight nine months ago so hey catch us up what's going on well last time we talked i was still working in television news in idaho and uh since then i have taken a position as the media coordinator at Botech and machine it was a dream job really for me because it was such an easy transition from um the news industry into um, the outdoor industry because it's something that I think that you know I've really wanted for some time and I just worked really hard to to make sure that I had the skills that I needed to get there and thankfully it worked out for me. So what do you do? What's your job? Mostly I run our social media. So Botech Incorporated is a family of brands. We have Diamond, Excalibur, uh, Striker, and then of course Botech. But then also with Botech is our Botech Women. And so I'm running about 15 different social media pages every day. And on top of that, we have YouTube channels and we're, we're uh, really gearing up and working on a great set of uh, how-to videos for the Diamond Line. It's really going to be, you know, instrumental in helping people who are just getting started to learn how to adjust their bow on their own and, and learn more about just overall shooting tips and tricks, which, you know, there, there's not a lot of information out there for you when you're first getting started. So we're really hoping to be, you know, a, a, a place for people to find really good information. So how, how did, how does that really work? I, I get the social media part and, and listeners, if you want to get into hunting industry, the easiest pathway that I know of right now is become a social media guru. Amy, would you uh, agree with that? <laughs> it's, I'll tell you right now, the hunting industry is uh, decades behind, it seems like, when in terms of technology, especially online. And if you have the ability and the understanding of how social media works and how dynamic it can be as a marketing tool, which I think a lot of outdoor, uh, a lot of the outdoor industry is just now really starting to see that this is it. This is an enormous tool. We've got to, we've got to capitalize on this. You know, this is where people are consuming every day. This is where they're going for their news. A lot of them aren't turning on the evening news anymore. They're getting on Facebook and they're going to their favorite news pages and they're watching videos right from their phone. And so if this is where people are living all basically 24 hours a day. If you can capitalize on that as a business or an industry, I mean, you've got a direct link right to your consumers. I couldn't have said it more. And, and, and Whitetail Rendezvous is, is, is living proof how a digital um, immigrant, I'm not even an immigrant, I'm an alien, digital alien, um, 70 years old um, with no background in podcasting can have 50,000 downloads on iTunes, which is a modest amount in, in the 
eight months and over 30,000 connections on social media. And I don't know what I'm doing. I, I truly don't, Amy. <laughs> well, you must be doing something right. <laughs> well, I've got a lot of smart people helping me. They're like 22 years old. Uh, let's see, my, my grandkids are 10, uh, 13, and 15. And they said, Gramps, it's really easy. Here's the, my uh, Abby uh, set up my Instagram account. She said, it's simple. <laughs> right, right. Well, you know, Botech is working on some stuff right now that I really think is going to take us to the next level. And we're going to be doing things, you know, here in the next six months, eight months, a year that you're not going to see from any other uh, company within the industry. And so we're really excited about that. We've hired on a great digital strategist and we are, are really looking forward to what our roadmap looks like because basically it's going to give us the ability to do things for our consumers that we haven't been able to do before. And that's, that's really our goal at this point. Um. I can't remember uh, the name, and I'll I'll send you this um, this um, live webinar the lady did. She's from Silicon Valley. I used to hear her when I was out in Silicon Valley eons ago, but she was still there, and she gives a trend report, and it's exactly what we're talking about now. And I'm going to make a note. Hold on a second, because folks, um, I I was part of the dot com boom, and unfortunately, I was part of the dot com bust. But it was a very exciting time because. Because it energizes you, and you're you're going into areas that you never were. We went to I was in Southern California, and we went from bricks uh, and mortar, literally bricks and mortar buildings, okay, buildings to bricks and clicks. And that everybody's going to say, well, what's the big deal about that? Well, you had to get money from people that had no idea what they were going to do, but they knew they had to get on the other side of of, of digital. They had to get into the digital world, e-commerce world, and we're right at the same. Place place now because social media is as small as it's ever going to be. It's not going to look the same way tomorrow as it does today. So get used to that because change could happen overnight. But if you're part of that and learn the skill sets that you need, you can have a place in the outdoor industry if you pay that price. Amy? Absolutely. You know, right now, if you are a hunter or a fisherman or whatever, just an overall outdoors uh, man, and you, you are using social media and you have a following, you are valuable. And it, the industry is really just starting to see that and go, hey, you know, maybe this person doesn't have um, the experience, but they have a huge following. If we can help them grow and, and teach them that experience, we can capitalize on that huge following. No question about it. And, um, I sent off, and I might, with your permission, we'll talk about that in the post show. Okay, okay, I'm going to get off, off track here. <laughs> okay, so let's go into Bowtech. You say it's a, a family of products. Now, everybody knows about Bowtech bows, and most people are finding out that they did buy a caliber crossbows out of Canada. So let's talk about how you see the industry um, for um, traditional bows, for compound bows, and then the rise of the use of uh, crossbows. How, do, how does that all work, and how are you promoting that? Well, for a long time, there's, there's definitely been a following for the vertical bows. I mean, everybody, you know, especially the compound bows. I am seeing a, a, a surge of people who are loving those traditional forms of bows, you know, the stick and string. Um, it's, I think it might be the Katniss Everdeen effect. <laughs> they really <laughs> like those traditional bows. Um, but as far as the crossbows go, I think that's been the most interesting one because crossbows really offer an avenue of hunting for people that were bow hunting that would not be able to, um, whether it be their age or physical disabilities. So there's really a growing number of people that are, are using crossbows just just simply because of the changing times. You know, people are living longer, and now, of course, we've got our, our military veterans who are coming back from from uh, overseas, and a lot of them are coming back with some pretty serious injuries, and crossbows allow them to do things that they wouldn't otherwise be able to do. And well said. And what I'm seeing is the data 
if you read Michigan, it probably has the best data out there. Um, there's some people say, oh, they're they're hunting with a, with a crossbow, so they're going to kill more deer during the archery season. Uh, do your research on that. You might be surprised. Yes, there might be some areas in, in your state or a state that harvest rates have gone up. But the thing, in talking to a lot of different people, you still have to hunt the deer. A crossbow, even though it can shoot 80 yards, and so can compounds, so can Botec compounds very effectively, right. extremely effectively. And so there's there's not that much delta there. And the other thing is, yes, in the hands of somebody that can use it, that's the operative word. They can be youth, they could be a woman who really pulling back a 50 pound bull, holding it when a bull elk's in front of them, or they're waiting for that white tail to clear behind the tree, it's not 10 seconds. Sometimes it can be a minute or more. That gets hard. Sure. And of course, of course, our veterans, that they might not have an arm or, or, or leg. Their back muscles might be um, jacked up from being service, but they can go out, take a crossbow, and hunt during archery season. Yes, absolutely. And I mean, really, at the end of the day, you know, they, they don't get out any more tags than, than they're expecting need to harvest you know like the, those numbers are very, are set like they're, they're not going to give out a thousand tags banking on the fact that maybe only 500 people will shoot one no that that's not how it works that that's not part of the conservation plan well said because it doesn't matter how good your bow shoots Guess who has to pull the release, let go, if you're shooting fingers on a traditional, let go, or pull a trigger as it is in, in a compound. You still have to make that decision for an ethical shot and take the shot that's going to harvest that deer or that bear or that elk. Well, I think for non hunters, there's very much this misconception that hunting is easy. <laughs> <laughs> and for those of us that go out and do it every year, it is not easy. We are not stronger than those animals. We are not. We Our senses are not better than those animals. We can't outrun those animals. I mean, it's, it's, you have to get within range. And that's hard enough with a rifle. But then when you cut that down to a 80 yards or less, you know, for me, it's much less. I don't shoot 80 yards of an animal. I don't feel comfortable. I shoot 60 or less, preferably 50 or less. So to get within 50 yards of an animal, especially one like an elk or a whitetail that are so sensitive to any outside stimuli, it's a challenge. But then you've got to get within, within range and get a shooting lane. Hunting is not easy. There's, there's no guarantee. I don't care how good of a, a pre, preseason scouting or anything else you do. There, there is absolutely no guarantee that you're going to you're going to harvest an animal. And unless you've been out there and hunted five miles, 10 miles a day, chase, I'm talking about chasing elk now, um, you haven't realized how hard it is. But the, the thrill of hearing that bull elk and, and watching this, the mist coming out of his nose when he's bugling. I mean, I, I can go right now to some places I've been in parks and watching this bull just screaming his head off. And there's another bull down the valley or down the meadow and he screamed back and you just go, oh my goodness, I'm here, I'm, you're living it. Forget the video, I mean, that's live. Well, when you, when you, I think when you hear that first bugle of the season, it's almost like you just freeze. And it's so surreal because, you know, you've gone a year without hearing anything, you know, other than the birds chirping. And then all of a sudden you hit that, that rut and those bulls are screaming. It's, it's your heart starts racing. And I mean, it's just instant excitement, you know? So I, I don't think there's any greater sound in the world than that, the sound of an elk bugle. <laughs> No, I, I, I would agree. And, and you know, hunting, hunting wet toes as much as I do, you know, the, the snort wheeze and I rattle them in. And I think of all the, the hours and the days and the months I've hunted elk as well as whitetail. And, and whitetail hunters, and just hear this, listeners, whitetail hunters make really good elk hunters because they hunt 40 acres for whitetail. And they know that whitetail in their woods intimately. And that's exactly what you have to do for an elk. You have to find where they are in that 10% of their total terrain. Now, total terrain, Amy, I don't know, 5, 10 miles, maybe 20 miles. Help me out on that. Oh, 
You know, I guess it really depends on the region you're at. Over on the coast with the with Roosevelt, though, they don't really travel all that much because they don't have to. We have such mild weather over here, but you can get you can get quite a migration range as you head, you know, farther east over into Idaho and, and uh, Colorado. And I think they move around a lot more. And the funny thing about elk, you're sitting on a mountainside and you watch somebody bust a herd and they don't stop until you can't see them. And from the top of a mountain, I can see 10 miles really easy. And it's just amazing the ground those critters cover. So you think about that and you say, and I'm hunting those things? So that's yeah. how good a hunter you have to be to get up close and personal. And I'm talking, you know, 50 yards or less. And when I was shooting a compound, that's, I didn't shoot past 50 yards. One, because I'm older and we didn't have the technology. But even with a compound, I shot fingers. And everybody said, oh, go to release. You can shoot further. I go, no, I, that's the way I hunted. Right. By choice. You know, by choice. So, Amy, tell me about Bowtech Women Ambassadors. What's that all about? So, part of Bowtech is we've also created these Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter pages for Bowtech Women Ambassadors. And we have two really prominent women ambassadors, and uh, that's Rihanna Carey, who's part of our pro staff, and uh, Chrissy Hay Knox, who's also part of our pro staff. But what we do is really aim to create content that is women specific. So, you know, gosh, 10 years ago, I would say, when I first started getting into hunting and really getting involved, I noticed that all that there was available was like shrink it and pink it, you know, or for a lot of, for me, like when I first started hunting, there was no female clothes. I was wearing men's clothes clothes and and we were shooting men's rifles and men's you know bows and and everything was for men and and then it went to shrink it and pink it so then I just took that man's equipment and you know shortened it down and threw a bunch of pink on it and gave it to women well what what we found as as companies in the outdoor industry and first of all not every lady likes pink (laughs) but secondly like women we're shaped differently. You can't just shrink something and expect it to fit us, you know? So Votech has really designed a lot of products that are designed specifically for women. For instance, our Eva Shockey Signature Series bow, designed by Eva Shockey for women. And I'm telling you right now, it's not just because I work for Votech, because I do love the Votech product, but that Eva Shockey Signature Series bow is hands down the best bow I have ever shot in my entire life. Not only is the draw cycle smooth, I was able to increase my poundage by like, I think it was between five and eight pounds just from from the get-go, like from the start. It has a really smooth draw cycle, it has a firm back wall, and it's, I've never shot a bow that is that accurate. So Bowtech Women Ambassadors is really working to create content for women via our social media outlets. Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, but we're also listening to women to hear what they want, you know, and what they need or what they're looking for, and we really just want to be a resource for them. If you're a woman and you want to be in the outdoor industry, whether you come from a hunting family or not, we want to be someplace where you can find information and a network of support. You mentioned a bunch of different things. One, um, you heard Amy start talking technical about her bow. And the one thing I would say to, to men and women listen to this, get to know what your your um, weapon of choice can do for you, but get to know what it really does. Because Amy mentioned in the warm-up they're doing some videos and how-tos because – in the end, the better you can fine tune your stuff, the better you can take care of your your gear in the field, the better hunter you're going to be and the more confidence you have. Amy, your thoughts on that? Oh, absolutely. I think the last time we talked, um, you had asked me a question about my arrows. And I said, oh, I don't know. I just go down to the pro shop and the guy gives me the arrow and <laughs> I kind of, you know, shoot whatever he tells me to shoot. But now that I've, I've uh, started working here, it's really opened my eyes to just how important it is to, to not only understand your bow, but all of the rest of your equipment, your rest your sight, your release, you know, your arrows, your, your, why your broadheads fly the way they do. You know, today I went in and um, I wanted to start using those lighted knocks because we just got cleared here in Oregon last year to use lighted knocks. 
so I popped one on my, you know, arrow, and I'm shooting, and I'm like, oh, this something seems weird about this. So I grabbed a regular arrow with a regular knock on, and I grabbed my lighter knock, and I took it in there, and I had to weigh it. There was a 16-grain difference between the ones with lighted knocks and the one with regular knock. Now, I have sighted in for a regular knock with a 362-grain arrow. My 378-grain lighted knock arrows are not going to fly the same. So I'm either going to have to just use regular knocks or just use lighted knocks because, we have, you know, that 16 grain at 20 yards, it's, it's minimal. But when you're shooting animals like an elk out at 60 yards, you could be dropping six inches. Or more. Or more. Just depending, you know, for me with my, my bows maxed out at 51 and some change, I'm shooting about 245 feet per second. So my arrow is going to drop a lot faster than, say, my husband, who's got a 29-inch draw length and, you know, shoots 66 pulls, 66 pounds. So. And throw in um, wind, just conditions, weather conditions, and then throw in slope up or down. And you've got an interesting equation that you have to solve pretty quickly. Absolutely. And I'm a I'm a big advocate is is you practice the way you hunt. You know, there's there's I wanna know that when I pick up my equipment that when I fire off an arrow, that when it leaves my bow, it is leaving my bow with all of the best technology behind it. And if I don't understand how it works, I shouldn't release that arrow. Because we have a, have a choice as, as hunter. You've got to make ethical shot. I mean, nothing is more devastating than, than getting a bad shot on an animal. But I want to make sure that when I fire off an arrow, I know that my equipment has been tested and it is with the best intentions. I I don't ever want to uh, just go out there willy-nilly and, and start pointing arrows. It reminds me, um, you know, bringing up to date, the final basketball finals are on. And do you think Steve Curry takes a second or longer to think about a shot? Oh, it's all muscle memory. It's all muscle memory. And that's, and you said it, you know, the way you practice is the way you're going to hunt. If you just say, hey, you know, season's coming up in 30 days, I'm going to shoot some arrows. You go in the backyard, you get your target, shoot some arrows. Oh, I'm good. Right. Not. No. Not. Just don't do that, people. And 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 we all know people who, who hey, I've been shooting all my life, and and I I can remember I shot I shot indoors, and then I I had 20 yards in my backyard in the house that I lived at, and I would just take a break. I'd take three arrows, and then I'd shoot them. The best part, I, I used to line up my, my sights, and then I used to shut my eyes. But at 20 yards, you can do that. that that's right. not a big thing. Yeah, you can do that. You just shut your eyes, and it's all muscle memory. You just keep everything the same, and you just breathe in, shut your eyes, breathe out, and open my fingers. And I could do that all day long. It, it's not that hard, folks. 30 yards and 40 yards, yeah, but at, at 20 yards, you can do that and it's all muscle memory so thanks for that Amy because that's what it is and Steve Curry doesn't think about that shot he goes on hits the spot you know elevates shoots goes in doesn't go in fine but it's the same shot time after time after time and you owe it to the critters to be that good absolutely I mean, we all love animals. It's, I mean, this is why we do what we do. And, you know, it's all part of a, a much larger plan to conserve those animals and ensure that we have them for generations to come. And there's nothing more disappointing than when you're out hunting and you see a, a, a big elk walking across the mountain and you look up there and there's something dangling on the backside, you know. I mean, I don't see it very often with, with elk, but I have seen some, some things with antelope, you know, and it's, it happens. I mean, we all, anybody who's just archery at some point you get a bad shot and it's devastating you know but the more you can get out there and shoot even if it's you know for me I make sure I shoot 20 arrows a day you know I have five arrows I shoot at least four times and I say, okay, no matter what kind of day I'm having, I'm going to shoot 20 arrows a day. And I'm telling you, just doing that for five days a week, 20 arrows a day, my accuracy has gone up exponentially. And I know my bow better than I've known any bow in my entire life, you know, and I've had it for far less time. So, and when that elk, like you were, we were talking earlier, when that elk screaming in your face and you draw <laughs> back and, and you let go an arrow, by the time it's over, you go, wait, did I shoot? Was that me? What just happened? Because I, I, I just blacked out for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny because I can get right there and I'm going, you know, I've, I've had some close encounters. Let's, let's just leave it at that. The elk walked away unscathed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, it's, you know, again, it's, it's, uh, 
it's definitely not easy to be a hunter or to hunt, and especially with a bow. So uh, I always feel very fortunate that it's a part of my life because it's hard to imagine my life without it at this point. But, yeah, um, it's definitely an adventure. Say we got um, – we're running up. we got two or three minutes left, so just spend uh, about three minutes, no more than that, uh, it's sharing with – especially women, young ladies, um, or ladies who'd say, wow, how did Amy go from TV work and, and what you did before to get into Bowtech? And what did your career path look like? Um, so just share that. Okay. Um, so when I started my journalism career, I had hunted before, but I had not hunted much. And it wasn't really until my husband bought me my first bow that I really started to get into it. And so I did my first archery hunt in 2000. Uh, 13, and I just absolutely fell in love with it. And I realized that this was, you know, it just quickly became a big part of my life. And so then I started doing everything I could uh, to to uh, pitch story ideas to our news director that would get me out and allow me to do some hunting. And thankfully in Idaho, there's a, there's a big outdoor community. And so they really appreciated these stories because otherwise if I had been down in, uh, you know, some other states that probably wouldn't have been as uh, fortunate to do those stories. But I just really, um, I don't know. I just, I just focused on uh, getting better as an archer and uh, learning everything I could about uh, archery hunting and just hunting in general. I mean, I read a lot. I uh, spend a lot of time listening to podcasts. And um, if you want a job in the outdoor industry and you're passionate about it, especially if you're a lady, you are a valuable commodity because we are the fastest growing um, demographic in the industry. And outdoor, you know, people, outdoor companies really need women. I just spent a weekend at the Northwest Ladies Hunting Camp. Big name sponsors, Leopold, Weatherby, Cabela's, um, Botech, of course, and um, Girls with Guns, National Wild Turkey Federation. But what's really great about that camp is it's all female instructors. There's a huge group of ladies from Weatherby, a huge group of ladies from Leopold. So those jobs are there if you're willing to put in the time and, and really, you know, especially from a marketing perspective, if you've got marketing skills, whether it be with social media or just general marketing skills, you are a valuable commodity in this industry. So why did you choose to leave TV and, and go to work for Bowtech? Did they hunt you down or did, talk to me about that? I just, um, I, I just, outdoors was my passion and, and I was just, it was my contract was up and I wanted to be closer to my family and I just, on a whim one night, I went on while I was like between shows at the news station and I saw a job posting for the, it was a Bowtech uh, marketing coordinator. Well, I applied and when they saw that I had extensive background in media, they created the media coordinator for me. And that's, it really encompasses all media, not just social media. But for right now, my job has primarily been social media because that's the place where we, they've needed me the most. But I also uh, did, a, did a lot in filming how-to videos for the Diamond Mind, which you can find at mybow.diamondarchery.com. And it's like 10 to 12 videos that show you everything that you would need to know to get started with your bow. Thanks for that. And um, we're, we're at the um, almost the hard stop of the show. So just take a minute or two and give shout outs to whomever you want. Obviously, um, some people that have helped you along your career. So have at it. Oh, shout out. Steve. I don't even know where to start. Um, I'm just so very grateful to be part of the Botech family and um, so very grateful that I met my husband, uh, Ty Hartwig, several years ago because without him, I definitely wouldn't have been here uh, enjoying this wonderful career in the outdoor industry. Well, thanks for that. And Amy, it's just a joy to, to listen to you, listen to your passion, not only about hunting, but the, the new uh, company that you've lined yourself with and, and I just wish you all the best and have fun elk hunting. Thanks a lot. I'll keep you posted. Okay. Break, break, break. End the show. So I'm, I'm trying to find that, and I'll have to hunt with it, uh, hunt for it, um, that trend report because it was really good. Okay. Um, and, and I'll hunt for that. And then um, what else was I? Well, look at my notes here. So I owe you that. And then um, 
I'd love to have you on the show um, in January or so and, and talk about your elk hunt, successful, unsuccessful. You know, sure. that's, that doesn't, you know, it matters, but it doesn't really matter because the hunt and time you spend with your husband and other friends in, in the wilderness, that's for sure. Well, and this one's going to be a, a really unique one for me because it's the first hunt I get to do with my brother, who is deaf. And so, oh my goodness. Yeah, wow. I'm taking him on. He's never hunted elk with a bow. And we have been planning this trip for some time now. And so he is just really excited. And I'm just really excited just to be there with him. So, well, that, that and if you ever want, um, I don't know how we do it, but it, you know, if you'd ever want him to be on the show, if, if we could figure it out, you know, technologically wise, I'd, I'd love to have him after. After well, he, he, he can communicate. Like he has a hearing aid and everything. Oh. It's just sometimes his um, language is, is broken and a little bit hard to understand, but he might be really excited to do it. Um, I, I would love it if like, we could uh, have him on the show, especially after the elk season is over. So. Um, yeah. also, also as a side note, one of the, the projects I'm working on, like I said, is a webisode and we're hoping to have that off the ground in the next couple of months. And if that does launch, I would love to come back and talk about it. Yeah. No question about it. You can have me as a guest. I don't know if you're going to have guests, but <laughs> have me as a guest. Uh, I don't know yet. We're still in those planning stages, <laughs> but I, hey, but, I my first whitetail hunt this year. So where are you going to do that? West Virginia. Great. And who are you? doing it with some of our pro staff here one of them uh one of the girls is a country music recording artist and yeah. she her partner is a uh professional bass fisherman and they have a ranch out in west virginia and they're also who we're doing this webisode creation with so it's wow. going to be a lot of fun yeah that, that sounds really a lot of fun hey just a sidebar off that if you have any of the ladies that you're involved with that botech uh, botech uh woman ambassadors any any all they have to do is just go to whitetailrendezvous.com, interview scheduler, and, and pick a date and time. And then, you know, I'd love to have them on the show because if I can help promote you, let me put it this way. If I can help you become successful at what you're trying to do, then that makes this old guy feel real good. Um, I have three ladies in mind, so I will I will shoot off some emails to them and let them know. Uh, I'm sure you've heard of Rihanna Carey. It'd be great. You know, um, I've tried to reach out to Jim Shockey a, a number of times, and I've just never got through his publicist or whoever, which which is okay, because this show is built not on A-list people. Yeah, I, I just talked to Brenda Valentine today, and, and, and she's awesome, and, and she's a wonderful lady. But 90% of the people on the show are like you and me that, are, you know, we we just we work and we, we're passionate about hunting right right we, we're, we're doing it solo without guides yeah diy that's the best way that's my favorite i'm i'm too big of a control freak to have someone guide for me <laughs> <laughs> yeah, i can imagine hey i gotta go all right but this has for... been a blast and, and, and please stay in touch and if i can help you any way at all possible um just just you know get in touch with me all right thanks a lot okay bye bye Make sure you listen to the next episode of Whitetail Rendezvous, where you're going to hear about stealth hunting and running and gunning from Cole Sightsinger from Southeast Pennsylvania. Cole Mountain 88 has quite a story, folks. You're going to want to listen because he's got some great lessons learned. Hey folks, I hope you understand the importance of wearing proper hearing protection every time you fire around. One shot can damage your hearing forever. Whether at the range or in the field, ESP is my hearing protection of choice. The custom fit allows all day comfort, while the technology within the device allows you to hear normal sounds like the rustle of leaves, the bugle of an elk, or the snort wheeze of a buck. Check them out at www.esp america.com or call jack homa directly at 303-659-8844 thanks for joining us be sure to tune in tomorrow for another episode of whitetail rendezvous where you can listen and learn from the experts so you can be more successful on your next hunt until next time listen learn and succeed